The Age, a daily newspaper, has been published in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, since 1854. Owned and published by Nine, The Age primarily serves Victoria, but copies also sell in Tasmania, the Australian Capital Territory and border regions of South Australia and southern New South Wales. It is delivered both in hard copy and in online formats. The newspaper shares many articles with other nine publishing metropolitan daily newspapers, such as the Sydney Morning Herald. As of February 2017 The Age had an average weekday circulation of 88,000, increasing to 152,000 on Saturdays in a city of 5.0 million. The Sunday Age had a circulation of 123,000. These represented year-on-year -year declines of somewhere from 8% to 9%. The Age's website, according to third-party web analytics providers Alexa and SimilarWeb, is the 44th and 58th most visited website in Australia, respectively, as of July 2015. SimilarWeb rates the site as the seventh most visited news website in Australia, attracting more than 7 million visitors per month. History The Age was founded by three Melbourne businessmen, brothers John and Henry Cook, who had arrived from New Zealand in the 1840s, and Walter Powell. The first edition appeared on 17 October 1854. Syme family The venture was not initially a success, and in June 1856 the Cooks sold the paper to Ebenezer Syme, a Scottish-born businessman, and James McEwen, an ironmonger and founder of McEwen's & Co., for £2,000 at auction. The first edition under the new owners was on 17 June 1856. From its foundation the paper was self-consciously liberal in its politics, aiming at a wide extension of the rights of free citizenship and a full development of representative institutions, and supporting the removal of all restrictions upon freedom of commerce, freedom of religion and, to the utmost extent that is compatible with public morality, upon freedom of personal action. Ebenezer Syme was elected to the Victorian Legislative Assembly shortly after buying the age, and his brother David Syme soon came to dominate the paper, editorially and managerially. When Ebenezer died in 1860, David became editor-in-chief, a position he retained until his death in 1908, although a succession of editors did the day-to-day -day editorial work. In 1891, Syme bought out Ebenezer's heirs and McEwen's and became sole proprietor. He built up the age into Victoria's leading newspaper. In circulation, it soon overtook its rivals the Herald and the Argus, and by 1890 it was selling 100,000 copies a day, making it one of the world's most successful newspapers. Under Symes' control the age exercised enormous political power in Victoria. It supported liberal politicians such as Graham Berry, George Higginbotham and George Turner, and other leading liberals such as Alfred Deakin and Charles Pearson furthered their careers as the age journalists. Syme was originally a free trader, but converted to protectionism through his belief that Victoria needed to develop its manufacturing industries behind tariff barriers. In the 1890s, the age was a leading supporter of Australian Federation and of the White Australia policy. After Syme's death the paper remained in the hands of his three sons, with his eldest son Herbert Syme becoming general manager until his death in 1939. Symes will prevented the sale of any equity in the paper during his son's lifetimes, an arrangement designed to protect family control but which had the effect of starving the paper of investment capital for 40 years. Under the management of Sir Geoffrey Syme and his chosen editors Gottlieb Schuller and Harold Campbell, the age failed to modernise, and gradually lost market share to the Argus and to the tabloid The Sun News Pictorial, although its classified advertisement sections kept the paper profitable. By the 1940s, the paper's circulation was smaller than it had been in 1900, and its political influence also declined. Although it remained more liberal than the extremely conservative Argus, it lost much of its distinct political identity. 
The historian Sybil Nolan writes, accounts of the age in these years generally suggest that the paper was second-rate, outdated in both its outlook and appearance. Walker described a newspaper which had fallen asleep in the embrace of the Liberal Party, querulous, doddery and turgid are some of the epithets applied by other journalists. It is inevitably criticized not only for its increasing conservatism, but for its failure to keep pace with innovations in layout and editorial technique so dramatically demonstrated in papers like The Sun News Pictorial and The Herald. In 1942, David Syme's last surviving son, Oswald Syme, took over the paper. He modernized the paper's appearance and standards of news coverage removing classified advertisements from the front page and introducing photographs, long after other papers had done so. In 1948, convinced the paper needed outside capital, he persuaded the courts to overturn his father's will and floated David Simon Co. as a public company, selling £400,000 worth of shares, enabling a badly needed technical modernization of the newspaper's production. A takeover attempt by the Fairfax family, publishers of the Sydney Morning Herald, was beaten off. This new lease on life allowed the age to recover commercially, and in 1957 it received a great boost when the Argus ceased publication. Topic: 1960-present. Oswald Syme retired in 1964, and his grandson Ranald Macdonald became chairman of the company. He was the first chairman to hand over full control of the paper to a professional editor from outside the Syme family. This was Graham Perkin, appointed in 1966, who radically changed the paper's format and shifted its editorial line from the rather conservative liberalism of the Symes to a new, left liberalism, characterized by attention to issues such as race, gender, and the environment, and opposition to white Australia and the death penalty. It also became more supportive of the Australian Labour Party after years of having usually supported the coalition. The Liberal Premier of Victoria, Henry Bolte, called the age, "...that pinko rag", a view conservatives have maintained ever since. Former editor Michael Gawenda in his book American Notebook wrote that the "...default position of most journalists at the age was on the political left." Also in 1966, MacDonald took the fateful step of allowing Fairfax to acquire a minority stake in The Age, although an agreement was signed guaranteeing the paper's editorial independence. Fairfax bought controlling interest in 1972. Perkins' editorship coincided with Gough Whitlam's reforms of the Labour Party, and The Age became a key supporter of the Whitlam government, which came to power in 1972. Contrary to subsequent mythology, however, The Age was not an uncritical supporter of Whitlam, and played a leading role in exposing the loans affair, one of the scandals which contributed to the demise of the Whitlam government. It was one of many papers to call for Whitlam's resignation on 15 October 1975. Its editorial that day, "'Go now, go decently' began. We will say it straight, and clear, and at once. The Whitlam government has run its course. It would be Perkins' last editorial, he died the next day. After Perkins' death, the age returned to a more moderate liberal position. While it criticized Whitlam's dismissal later that year, it supported Malcolm Fraser's liberal government in its early years. However, after 1980 it became increasingly critical and was a leading supporter of Bob Hawke's reforming government after 1983. But from the 1970s, the political influence of the age, as with other broadsheet newspapers, derived less from what it said in its editorial columns which relatively few people read than from the opinions expressed by journalists, cartoonists, feature writers and guest columnists. The Age has always kept a stable of leading editorial cartoonists, notably Les Tanner, Bruce Petty, Ron Tanberg and Michael Lunig. 
In 1983, Fairfax bought out the remaining shares in David Syme & Co., which became a subsidiary of John Fairfax & Co. McDonald was denounced as a traitor by the remaining members of the Syme family, who nevertheless accepted Fairfax's generous offer for their shares, but he argued that the Age was a natural partner for Fairfax's flagship property, the Sydney Morning Herald. He believed the greater resources of the Fairfax Group would enable the age to remain competitive. By the 1980s a new competitor had appeared in Rupert Murdoch's national daily The Australian. In 1999 David Syme & Co. became The Age Company Limited, finally ending the Syme connection. The Age was published from offices in Collins Street until 1969, when it moved to 250 Spencer Street hence the nickname. The Spencer Street Soviet, favored by some critics. In 2003, The Age opened a new printing center at Tullamarine. The headquarters moved again in 2009 to Collins Street opposite Southern Cross Station. In 2004, Gawenda was succeeded as editor by British journalist Andrew Jaspin. Jaspin aroused controversy by initially appearing to not know that The Age was published in Melbourne, sacking Gerard Henderson, a conservative columnist, from the paper and by making remarks critical of Douglas Wood, an Australian engineer who was held hostage and tortured in Iraq. Jaspin accused Wood on ABC Radio of being boorish and coarse for speaking harshly about those who kidnapped and tortured him. In February 2007, The Age publicly advocated on behalf of the Free David Hicks campaign when Hicks was a prisoner at Guantanamo Bay. In 2009, The Age suspended its columnist Michael Backman after one of his columns condemned Israeli tourists as greedy and badly behaved, prompting criticism that he was anti Semitic. A press council complaint against The Age for its handling of the complaints against Backman was dismissed, reporting on the 19th of March 2010 on alleged corruption in religion. The Age claimed that the Vienna Boys Choir has been caught up in accusations that pedophile priests systematically abused their choristers. Even though the complaints were made against teachers and older pupils of the choir, which is a private organization, Reviewing the matter, journalist Paul Mees in Crikey accused The Age of outright fabrication. In 2014, The Age put a photograph of an innocent man, Abu Bakr Alam, on the front page, mistakenly identifying him as the perpetrator of 2014 Endeavour Hills stabbings. As part of the settlement, the newspaper donated $20,000 towards building a mosque in nearby Doveton. As of 2012, three editions of The Age are printed nightly the NAA edition, for interstate and country Victorian readers, the Mayor edition, for metropolitan areas, and a final late metropolitan edition, the TAR. Like its Fairfax stablemate the Sydney Morning Herald, The Age announced in early 2007 that it would be moving from a broadsheet format to the smaller Berliner size, in the footsteps of The Guardian and The Courier Mail. In December 2016, editor in chief Mark Forbes was stood down from his position pending the result of a sexual harassment investigation. <laughs> Headquarters The Age headquarters, named Media House, is located at 655 Collins Street, Docklands, Melbourne, Victoria. It is shared with other nine business units including, 3AW Radio, Magic 1278 Radio, The Australian Financial Review, and Fairfax Community Network. Media House was designed by Bates Smart and built by Grocon for $110 million. The building was formally opened in October 2009. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Masthead. The Age Masthead nameplate has received a number of updates since 1854. The most recent update to the design was made in 2002. The current masthead features a stylized version of the Royal Coat of Arms of the United Kingdom and the Age in Electra Bold type. The crest features the French words Dieu et mon droit, God and my right. According to the Age's art director, Bill Farr, no one knows why they picked the royal crest. 
but I guess we were a colony at the time, and to be seen to be linked with the Empire would be a positive thing." The original 1854 masthead included the colony of Victoria Crest. In 1856, that crest was removed and in 1861, the Royal Coat of Arms was introduced. This was changed again in 1967, with the shield and decoration altered and the lion crowned. In 1971, a bold typeface was introduced and the crest shield rounded and less ornate. In 1997, the masthead was stacked and contained in a blue box with the logo in white. In 2002, in conjunction with an overall revamp of the paper, the masthead was redesigned in its present form. Ownership In 1972, John Fairfax Holdings bought a majority of David Symes shares, and in 1983 bought out all the remaining shares. On 26 July 2018, Nine Entertainment Co. and Fairfax Media, the parent company of The Age, announced they agreed on terms for a merger between the two companies to become Australia's largest media company. Nine shareholders will own 51.1% of the combined entity and Fairfax shareholders will own 48.9%. Printing The Age was published from its office in Collins Street until 1969, when the newspaper moved to 250 Spencer Street. In July 2003, the $220 million five-story age print center was opened at Tullamarine. The center produced a wide range of publications for both Fairfax and commercial clients. Among its stable of daily print publications are The Age, The Australian Financial Review and The Bendigo Advertiser. The building was sold in 2014, and printing will transferred to regional presses. Topic Editors Topic See also Journalism in Australia List of newspapers in Australia